Hi there. I'm Carrie Kirastar Ellis, author of the 21st Century Superhuman book series. And today I've got a really fun lady with me. She's brilliant. She's a bright young starseed. And she knows so much about taking care of the body, about cleansing it, about upgrading it. Hey, Jody, how are you today? Hello, I'm good. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Oh, I'm so excited to have you here with me and just encompassing everything that you do is so amazing. You are a wealth of knowledge of heart and soul in your, your work and what you have to transmit to people. Thank you. It's a real honor to be here with you and to be sharing this. I'm very, very excited. So you are a world traveler. Mm-hmm. I know you've lived all over the world, right? Yes, I've been to many different places, experienced many different cultures, and it's one of my favorite things to do is just to learn wisdom from around the world. I feel it helps us grow so much. Yes, and what has that taught you about cleansing and healthy living? I bet you've kind of gleaned things from ancient cultures and herbal understandings and different forms of nutrition can you tell us a little bit about how that has enriched your kind of maps of the world? Yeah, well, I, I grew up in Australia and I've been obsessed with herbal knowledge since I was young. You know, I mm -hmm. worked with a naturopath from the age of five and, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, really young because my mother was very holistic. And yes, that's so exciting. <laughs> you were raised vegetarian, right? Yes, I was. Raised veg vegetarian, unvaccinated, didn't have processed foods until I was about five, breastfed till I was four and a half. So wow. had a very <laughs> interesting start. That's Do you sure. have brothers and sisters or were you like the one lucky one that got all this or did you all get it? So my sister, she came when I was almost five. So oh, okay. a, li a little bit different, you know, having another child. So I think I definitely got the health kind of, the healthy start. My sister you know, didn't want to breastfeed at the age of two. So wow. we were a little bit different in that sense. I think this was meant to be my, my destiny. <laughs> yes, very much so. And then from Australia and that kind of growing up to what took you around the world? Yeah, I, I've definitely always been driven to learn from different cultures and their wisdom. And you know, going to different parts of the world, what's fascinating is many different cultures view health and the body actually in the same way. 
And that's where it really started to be like, wow, this isn't makeup. You know, the things I'm learning and reading about, you know, because the doctor and the medical system teaches us something different. You know, it teaches us that that's wrong and it's almost like magic. You know, I used to kind of think people would say, you know, you're a witch, you're exploring potions and medicines. They don't work. Right. But when you hear multiple cultures that some of them are still living off the land that they're still using this and they're thriving and they're healthy and it's actually those of us that aren't doing that that are getting sick that's when it starts to pop in like wow these people know these cultures know and we have all the wisdom we need inside of us already beautiful and they're carrying intrinsic ancient knowledge that's been there for generations and so to get to travel and absorb some of that had to kind of give you this fortification of your knowledge and your beliefs and to help you dig deeper. Yes, definitely. And I, mean, I feel so blessed that I'm able to do that. So we're going to talk about some really exciting, actually what I call even old grandmother remedies today, you know, things that have been around for many generations and that, maybe nobody would consider even medicinal today. But when we research and we go into that ancient knowledge or many generations of knowledge, we come up with some, some, oh, wow, awarenesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just so impressed at the research you've done. You're really incredible. Um, what you've brought forward. We'll get to that in a little bit. But first of all, how about if we just look at your story? And yes, definitely. I'd, I'd love to share a little bit about my story because I feel it helps people not feel isolated, you know, and to see that transformation is possible, that we can all transform. So yes. You know. When, when people go to your website, we'd like them to go through the link that we're sharing so, so you can tell that they came from this show and working here with bottom. Awesome. It's jody-louise.com forward slash life dash changing dash detox dash protocols forward slash. So you can always uh, stop the video for a second and jot that down. And it'll also be under the video. But when you go to Jody's website, it'll be really nice to look at that. Look at you with all these beautiful ladies. <laughs> I love women. I love being around women and love holding space for women. And it's so beautiful to come together because, you know, women and men are very different and we have different needs and we feel differently and we have different hormones. So coming together in a circle of women for me is deeply healing and deeply necessary. Like they used to do, you know, the ancients would all gather in circle. <laughs> right. And, you know, my husband participates in circles of men. And I think sometimes women getting together and men getting together, we can help each other understand our bodies, our spirits um, in a way that maybe a mixed group doesn't. And so mm -hmm. that can be very uplifting. So you share your story for the women out there who've been told they can't heal from digestive issues. Go ahead and tell us a little bit. You told us a little about your parents, you being raised mm -hmm. vegetarian, no processed foods until the age of five. And then you began binge eating sweets and goodies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the things about having an upbringing where you don't have a lot of foods and you're kind of told you can't eat them, it makes you want to eat them. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I remember my vegetarian mama friends and their kids would go, I want chicken McNuggets, <laughs> you know, and, um, and she would let them have them just so that they could have the opportunity to compare. But mm -hmm. she was always about feeding them healthfully, which I'm sure your mom was too. Well, I was, a, I was a bit different in the sense of chicken nuggets, though. I was a huge animal lover. And if I was naughty, my parents would threaten to take me to McDonald's. So I'm probably one of the rare children that I would kick and scream, no, no, please don't take me to McDonald's. Wow, that is really cute. That is very <laughs> cool. What smart parents. Yeah, so I, in that sense, I didn't want the meat, but I did want the candies and I did want the sugars. You know, as soon as I went to a friend's birthday party and tasted them, I was like, oh my God, why haven't I been allowed to eat this? And I think because I had such a clean up bringing when I did start to eat those foods, my body really didn't understand what they were. So it wasn't long before I became quite hyperactive and I started to have belly issues. I remember when I was seven, 
telling my mum to take me to the doctor because I had bubbles in my belly. Mummy, I have bubbles in my belly and I think I had gas. And I was like, they're coming out. I have bubbles everywhere in my belly. So it started (laughs) really young for me getting the parasites and I, you know, whatever I was picking up and I started to have cravings and getting irritable when I couldn't have what I wanted. And I developed a binge eating disorder very, very, very young to the point that I was closet eating. I was eating so, so much that I would literally fall asleep. So it was, it was very challenging actually. And I didn't understand and I would hide the evidence and I was using eating to cope with my emotions actually, because I never really learned how to feel. So I learned to feel through food. You know what else too? I think when we spend a time period living really healthfully and then we go off of that, it's almost harder on the body than if we're just kind of eating poorly all along. Um, I Mm -hmm. know when I was in high school, I was on just this, like I had picked out what foods to eat. I was really clear. I was like probably the healthiest I've ever been in my life. And so when I've eaten more heavier foods over the years, the ill effects of those have shown up much more rapidly than I think they would in somebody who's just chronically eating poorly. But I, but what, and how great for you to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what I uncovered later is that it was control. It was technically controlled eating. And then I started to develop severe constipation, which Mm. is also connected to control. Binge eating is also a form of control. If I if I can control what I'm eating, I'm in control of my emotions. Right, 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 mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And when you're constipated, it's actually because you're not able to relax. You're holding and you're controlling, like, and you're not allowing yourself to feel and you're not allowing yourself to surrender to life. So control has been one of the biggest energies emotionally that I have found that has caused many of my health problems, actually. It's mm. surrender to life is a huge part of healing and has been for me. So how did you begin to detox your body and learn about that? Through a lot of control. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, when, I, when I was very sick, so as I got older, I went through a very reckless party girl phase, drinking, drugs. I was a music journalist in Ibiza, <laughs> which is the party wow. capital of the world. And I was backstage at nightclubs thinking I was living the high life, interviewing DJs. And I thought my life was the best, you know. (laughs) And but then I got really sick because I wasn't sleeping. I was abusing my body. My liver was overloaded. And I one day woke up covered in psoriasis all over Mm. my body. Started off on the back of my heart, huge cluster And then it started to spread over my whole body and it was itchy, it was inflamed and I didn't want to be seen by the world. I didn't want to go anywhere. I isolated myself and I ended up having to go back to Australia. I was in and out of hospital three times a week just to get treatments and to try and get healing and and nothing was working. And then my skin on my face blew up as well and... It was just it was just a big mess that I had no choice but to make changes in my life. The universe said, uh-uh, this isn't your destiny. You're not meant to be a party girl. You have bigger things planned. And, yeah, this will be a good image to show, actually, of how bad my, my face got. Mm, how detoxing saved my skin. I was so insecure about my skin problems. Wow. Look at you. That is mind blowing. And how many people struggle with this? Yeah. And you can see on the image around the hairline, that's actually psoriasis, which I know many people suffer with on their scalp. And then on the cheeks, that's more cystic hormonal acne um, from hormonal imbalances. And you you can see it's angry. My skin was angry it was just all coming out. And that's because I wasn't allowing myself to feel and I was overloading my body with toxins and chemicals. Wow. That Mm -hmm. is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And how beautiful you are today with a clean, healthy body. Mm, Thank you. It's been a big 
change to not have to wear makeup to hide myself. You know, I used to just pack on the makeup and hope that people couldn't see the big pussy spots underneath. It was really hard. This was all through my 20s, you know, when we're meant to be feeling our most vibrant and attractive. And I just wanted to hide from the world, you know. So that is amazing. How long did it take you of uh, once you started understanding detoxing? How long did it take you to go from the picture on the left to the picture on the right? Well, even the picture on the left, I was three years into my detox journey. And oh my I, goodness. I shared this vulnerably and truthfully because I've seen in my own body how long it takes to really right. undo damage of what I had done to my body. Ah. And the problem was I was actually going, I went many different directions and I was using my body as a, an experiment. You know, I was doing fruit fasting, I did nothing but 30 days of bananas, I did dry fasting, water fasting. And what was actually happening was I was actually going in too quickly and I was making things worse. See, so that's I've really <laughs> good to know too, that you have this, it's always nice to hear that somebody has been through these layers of experience that they have tried, you know, because I've been really five decades of vegan, vegetarian, all raw, detoxing, fasting, all these different kinds of things, and many years of experience under the belt. And for you to have gone through your cleansing and really gone through several years and discovering that trying these different things just didn't really get you there, that kind of experience helps us have confidence in what you're sharing with us as being really valuable. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely feel we need to experience things in order to teach. You know, it's one thing to read a book, but until we actually experiment and and what I was sharing five years ago has changed. And that's a deeply humbling experience as well to say what I was saying five years ago, I don't stand by that anymore. I found that's something cool. new. And, you know, I have those kind of things, too. I And we change. And I wish I knew throughout my life what I know now. But we accumulate wisdom and experience as we go along. So if you guys want to go to um, Jody's website, please go through jody-louise.com forward slash life-changing-detox-protocols as you see scrolling along the bottom of the screen. And that will mm -hmm. take you to a page where you can sign in with your email and you can, and then Jody will send you an immediate email back and that will help her know that you came to her through this program, which helps all of us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And there's some, good, there's some goodies on there as well. We've got some free detox protocols on there and some links to some of the things we'll be talking about today as well. So yes. yeah, there's some nice goodies on there that you'll probably like. <laughs> So your confidence level dropped and then you went through, you even went to the hospital for treatments. Wow. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember being in the hospital and asking them, you know, is there anything I can change in my diet? They said, oh, maybe you could stop drinking alcohol. That's right. All because they, said. they don't really know because they don't know. they're not trained that way. They're trained. No. They're trained to stop the problem, but not to resolve what causes it. So no. let's look at, you knew that you needed to do a skin detox and you had almost given up and you decided to come back to your body and dig deep into why this was happening. And you discovered all these different things that really needed help, which were congested lymphatic system, tired mm -hmm. kidneys, sluggish liver, being stuck in the old matrix programming, having a backed up colon, unbalanced hormones, genetically weak skin, suppressed trauma and emotions in the body. So all of this, you began really digging in for how to resolve those root causes. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I did it in the wrong order. <laughs> ah. I, went, I went straight to my lymphatic system, which for those of you that know anything about how the body works, if you start detoxing the lymphatic system first, it starts to try and empty and it's got nowhere to go. So ah. I was just researching, oh, how do I fix my skin? And everyone talks about, well, it's a sluggish lymphatic system. But unless your kidneys are open, you're, you're going to the toilet properly, then no matter what you do to your lymphatic system, nothing will 
will help it. So I learned the, all the wrong ways and the right ways of how to start detoxing the body. And it starts with the gut. It all starts with the gut. And I love this part where you're talking about um, your hormones had were out of balance and you had um, the psoriasis and various signs on your body that began to clear up when you started doing properly the proper kind of mm -hmm. detox, including getting rid of cellulite. Um, so you're inviting people to detox with you and mm -hmm. flush out toxins from their skin and their whole body. Yeah. So I work on a very holistic level. I realize that detoxing the body alone is not enough. While it's very important, we need to work on every single level, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Because if we don't, it's just a Band-Aid. So, right. yeah, I pay attention to all the things from the words that we speak, the thoughts that we're having, detoxing our relationships. It's really detoxing our lives on every level. That's what I, I share. And if we're not in alignment to our purpose, this is all toxins within our being. And the body doesn't know the difference between us feeling an emotion and us being physically ill. So if we feel sad, the body identifies that as some type of pain and it has to put it somewhere. So we can treat that, you know, the physical symptom, and that's important to look at our physical body. We shouldn't neglect that. But we also need to be working on well, what's the root cause of this. And it's always an emotion. So I work holistically in that sense. Um, so on an emotional level, talking about what's present, talking about emotions. And then on a physical level, I'm a big advocate of detox because when we detox the body, we actually create spaciousness to feel because then the parts, so say we've suppressed something in our liver, we start to do a detox. And many people say like day three of a detox, I'm so irritable, I'm so frustrated. And that's because we're creating spaciousness in the body for those trapped emotions to leave the body. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shall we look at how to stop unhealthy food cravings a second? Yes, I think that's a, a great point because we all have some type of cravings to some to some level. I we do. Everybody mm -hmm. does, I think. And um, I mean until we train ourselves how to let go of those. That's right. So and I just want to comment too. your website is so beautiful. And again, that link that's scrolling by the bottom is the one. If everybody will go to your website through that link, they can see all these different pages. Um, but it will help Jody know that you came through this show and it helps us work together on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful picture. I mean, you're just amazingly, amazingly, amazingly beautiful clear, clean with um, the lifestyle that you're, you've chosen. Thank you. It's definitely. And I, know it's, <laughs> I know it's not come without a lot of work. Oh my gosh. And it's, it's constant. And that's one thing I like to always say to people is like, you know, you can look at my website or you can look at my Instagram and think, oh, she's got the most perfect life. And do you know what? The work never ends. And I'm sure you can advocate for that. There's always something more. There's never, we, if we go into something like, I want to fix this, I want to be healed. That's the very energy that will keep us always needing to heal. And I've been there. I've learned that the only way to really be happy and healthy is through accepting who we are, accepting in this moment. Yes, I have this illness. Yes, I feel sick. Yes, I have pain. That's where we start to live our life. <laughs> so mm, I just wanted to share beautiful. that as I, I constantly meet people that come to me like, can you please fix me? Can you heal me? And, you know, we, we are our own healers and I'm definitely not a healer in the slightest. I'm just here to share wisdom, to share what's worked for me and to inspire people to give themselves that same gift. Absolutely. And we're getting some nice comments. One person says, too quickly, detoxing too quick, quickly, you were worse. And somebody said, thank you for that. Aha. And mm -hmm. then uh, Spectral Sun says, detox our life in every level. Yes to that. So we have some <laughs> nice comments coming in from people that are here. <laughs> you know, we can all relate to cravings. And it's a really good place to start 
when starting to explore detox. And when we experience a craving, it can be for multiple different reasons. You know, most people think, oh, I'm craving something, maybe I'm deficient in that. But the real kind of eye-opener is when you realize that we're more bacteria than we are human. And because we're more bacteria than we are human, our cravings usually aren't actually us. They're some type of parasite or bacteria, and that could be a good one, not necessarily a bad one, that's craving something. So firstly, it's really good to understand that. And when we have too much of what we identify as a bad bacteria, and when I say bad, it means that it's hurting us or we've got too much of it. It's basically not harmonious. We need bacteria. But yes. when we have too much of anything, just like in life, too much of anything is not a good thing. We need balance. When yes. they go out of balance, they start to crave foods and they start to send signals to us, eat more of this to save themselves. Yes. <laughs> And I, I, I'm fond of saying over many years that the that even the parasitic activity inside us can be very micro. It can be little teeny microorganisms. It can be everything from big to small. Candida is a type of parasitic activity or an imbalance. And um, yes, and so cleaning up the body is so important because it really is that whole microbiome is like a living brain. It's like a living, it, it is our every cell in our body, there are healthy little critters that are supposed to live in there too. So we have to change that environment for them to be there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to stop our cravings, right? That's right. If we, any type of craving, you know, I, I always like to bring in the emotional side of it as well. Yes, the bacteria is craving, but also cravings we have are also linked to emotions as well. So, you know, by craving certain foods, it can remind us of a past memory of something that happened. It can help soothe us. So any type of craving is showing us that something's out of balance because ultimately we don't need food. I'm sure you can feel the same after doing deep cleansing. We don't need Absolutely. food. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you share here where after many years of detoxing and then you decided that eating to try eating sugar, dairy, gluten, meat, alcohol, and coffee on a holiday. And then after having them, you wanted more. So, yeah. and then stopped feeling full, couldn't stop thinking about eating them again. And mm -hmm. especially cheese, cheese wow. is like, if you eat a bit of cheese, like it's, I don't think cheese is necessarily bad, but most of the cheese that people are buying isn't good quality. Correct. Um, but for me, cheese doesn't agree with my system, so I personally don't eat it. But I noticed as soon as I had just a little bit, I just wanted more and I wanted more and I wanted more. So I could see that was a part of me that, you know, needed that in that moment. And it was like, God, we haven't had cheese for years. And all of a sudden, it's like, give me more cheese. <laughs> right. And then carbs. I think carbs are probably one of the big nightmares of this society that keeps people's insulin off balance and keeps addictions going. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the thing about carbs is we're naturally programmed to eat the sweetest fruits. We're, yes. we're naturally programmed as humans that we would, before we had supermarkets, we'd walk around and we would smell and we would hunt and gather the sweetest fruits because that's what yes. we need. But we get confused. We think we need carbohydrates because we're not eating enough sweet fruit. Most of the fruit that we buy is underripe. It's not healthy. It's been picked weeks beforehand. So that's one of the biggest reasons we crave carbohydrates. So I always recommend to people if they're not eating a little bit of, you know, healthy fruit like berries or something like that, to take a look at that and maybe try eating more. Nice. And then you have mm -hmm. a really nice, some really nice pages on how to stop food cravings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just say, um, and avoiding being too restrictive, eating nutrient dense meals, really beautiful. You have so much really lovely um, information here at your website. And again, the link is below. For people. I'm thinking, shall we jump into our secret grandmother's remedy? Yes, I think it's, 
it's something that many people haven't heard of, you know, when, and when people first hear it, they're like, what you do what? <laughs> right. Yeah. I think we should do that because I've had experience with it too. And then, um, we can go into the results of the detox and cleanse after that. How's that? I think that's a great idea. Okay. Let me just share that. This is amazing. <laughs> So most, most people that have heard of turpentine, they know it as a paint thinner, something that you should definitely right. not put in your body. <laughs> right. But I'm, I'm sharing something a little bit different, and that's ancient wisdom. You know, some people, some cultures more than 5,000 years ago were using this as a remedy to heal their body for multiple, multiple things. You know, it used to be recommended as the thing to heal everything. It used to be the heal all and right. it's coming straight from pine trees that grow all over the world. One of the most oldest tree species on the planet. And why would it be everywhere if we're not meant to be working with it? You know, right. many people are hearing about, you know, using the pine needle tea in these days. Many people are talking about it. Correct. Well, what about using the sap? Why aren't we working with that? Right. And do you know a little bit about how they make the really natural gum spirits of turpentine? Yeah, so it's a different extraction process. It's a very, very slow process, which is why they started to do it cheaply. You know, most of the turpentine you see is yellow. If it's yellow, right. please do not put that anywhere near your mouth because that's not pure. Right. So it needs to go through a distillation process so then it becomes a clear fluid. It means it's right. pure turpentine. So they slowly Actually, collect it. Do you have your little bottle right nearby? I have mine right um, nearby. I don't have mine. I, I have a pine cone. <laughs> oh, a pine cone's great. Let me run yeah. and grab um, the one I have, and you can keep talking great. about it. Because this yeah. is... Uh, really precious information. And there actually was a lady do doctor who started bringing this forward, a Harvard educated lady doctor. And um, I think because she wouldn't treat people with medicines and she wanted to be treating them naturally, she had to give up her medical license. But um, she's a really neat lady. She's one of the people who brought this to the forefront. And um, go ahead and talk about it and I'll come right. Yeah. So she, she lost her license because she was talking about this because she was noticing that her patients weren't healing. In fact, the medication she was giving them, they were getting sicker. And, you know, many doctors in different countries in the world, you know, they're paid by the pharmaceutical companies to share these medicines. And turpentine is one of the cheapest things that you can get to heal your body. And that's why it used to be recommended and it used to be used. And the way that this doctor discovered it was because one of her patients said, that they were using this to get better and it was working and she said well where did they get it from and they said well in the old times that's all we could afford to use so now it's all about bringing it back and it's an ancient remedy it's not something new you know most people think oh what's this new thing that you're going on about it's this latest detox craze no 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 it's it, this is old wisdom and we can see pine being used across multiple different cultures and yeah you've got the bottle there so this is this is probably the best brand i've come across which is grown in the um us Di the diamond forest if you can show the label up close that would be yeah really yeah um it's called diamond g forest products and you can see it's very clear um mm -hmm. and it's really wonderful and so it's 100 percent. And this is just something I will just stress about now at the beginning. It's very important if you're considering this protocol that you find 100 percent pure. Now, right. even right. some of the 100 percent pure ones will have a label on there because they're legally required to say do not ingest. Please Correct. don't allow that to scare you because that's what they have to do because that's a requirement. Otherwise, they're not allowed to sell it. And they have to do that just to protect themselves. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, and I, I will say, yeah, I probably got into this maybe 10 years ago. And the other thing that I'd like to mention, and I think we'll get into this in a little bit, is there are um, a chemical compound called terpenes. And they are in the pine 
needle. They are in the pine sap. They are also in other essential oils that come from similar trees, such as tea tree, such as frankincense. And we we use those on a regular basis. That's how we stay healthy in our household. When there's been sickness going around the planet, there's never been a speck here. I mean, because we know how to daily dose ourselves with things that are going to help clean microorganisms out of the body that shouldn't be there. And, um, but this is a beautiful something that is not expensive and it can be gotten very easily. Um, I think, did you order this on Amazon? Cause I know this came from you. This was a gift to us from you, which was really sweet. Yeah, we, we got it from, um, they have it on Amazon and they also here in Mexico, they have it on Mercado Libre and you know, it's quite, quite simple to get, you know, of course, some countries, the shipping might be more to get it from, from Amazon, but right. they also have a direct website. This, this brand has a direct website you can buy from. And this is one that we, we can really recommend, you know, we're not affiliates for this brand. They don't even have an affiliate program or anything. Right. This is just, so just one thing I'd love to say about turpentine is the, a naturopath I was working with maybe 11 or 12 years ago told me to take turpentine. And I was wow. like, there is no way I'm taking turpentine. That is just ridiculous. That is just stupid and I'm not doing it. And it's taken a lot of research, a lot of reading, a lot of listening, hearing other people's experiences before I even considered trying it. So I've now experimented with it many, many times and with my partner also, and we are having the most transformational experiences. And I'm actually calling turpentine the serum of truth because mm. it opens up your pineal gland, it gets, crosses the blood-brain barrier, and it completely clears the candida to the point that you just can see the truth in everything. And yes. honestly, yes. that's a big commitment. And I think I can see why it took me so long to try it because Seeing the truth in everything isn't always <laughs> isn't always comfortable. <laughs> it's challenging, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's a it's a whole different way to live. You learn mm -hmm. to speak truth to each other. You learn to hold truth in the space that you walk in. Yes, we practice that too. And and I think also the thing about cleansing the pineal gland, removing the calcifications and what's been put there over the corruptions in our system that include pesticides and sprays and GMOs and fluoride, of course, mercury, mm -hmm. aluminum, all of those things. And if this starts cleaning those away and then the pineal, which is our, our source of our synchronicities, our, te tele our telepathic knowing um, mm -hmm. that we really learn how to be more transparent people and to to walk and talk in the truth, which is, mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a new thing to embody because it isn't really taught in our culture that much. That's right. And I find it so interesting that, you know, we spoke at the beginning of the call about different cultures and that cultures throughout the history of time have all seen pine as the tree uh, of longevity and everlasting life in mm. Egypt pine cones in the tomb you see in the roman traditions they have pine cones on their staff and in many cultures the pine cone represents the pineal gland the place that we open up our spiritual wisdom and right. we've got a few slides in like on this book that we can share soon which i can go into that in more detail but and, and this book that. is going to be for is going to be for sale on your website right and this is it's, it's an amazing book. It's about a 60 page book and it's really a guide to what the turpentine does, how to take it. I want to say just at the beginning of this conversation too, that you need also need to learn dosage. If a little is good, what we've learned, if a little is good, more is not better. You know, that's kind of the modern, like, oh, I want more philosophy, but it just only takes a very small amount. And it's usually taken with sugar to take it into the cells or castor oil to help pull the toxins out of the cells. And so the instructions for that are in here. And um, the instructions that we have used, that Jody has used, that she has discovered from her research. And so you want to be sure to read all those details, 
to follow the instructions and do it in a way that is using wisdom. Yes, very important, very important to read the book in detail before starting this because there are many important steps to take before you're ready. There's a lot of preparation and and that's important to consider. So this, very please good. make sure you read that page if you do buy the book. <laughs> Perfect. So where would you like to go from here in talking about this? We have some nice testimonials and one from <laughs> myself and Marek in there. And um, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I, I think, you know, ultimately some of the, this is actually an interesting page that you've pulled up actually. Um, and this talks about if you, this, I think it's the second half of the page. It talks about the pharmaceutical industry. There was the, the manual that used to include turpentine in there for healing so many different things. And today right. it went from this big section and there weren't many different things recommended. And now there's thousands of different medications to use for different things. And turpentine, there's just a, something in there to say, if you accidentally swallow it, what to do. <laughs> right. So. It's amazing how they're, the modern pharmaceutical industry has worked to, and I know it came through uh, Rockefeller at one point to diminish people's use of natural remedies and get them dependent on the pharmaceutical industry, which is predominantly petroleum based. Mm -hmm. um, some things come from plants originally, but they ultimately end up in a form that the body can't really figure out what it is. So there's side effects to just about every medication because the body has to compensate to um, to recognize a partial construct of something. The body's really designed to recognize in nature what is natural, how it fits with the body's healing process, which is very mm -hmm. natural. That's right. Yeah. So what in the medical system, you know, all the pharmaceutical industry, everything is synthetic forms, which they've kind of cloned nature but you can't make money off nature. There's a law around that. You can't give it a name. You can't sell it. So they've changed the names of things and made them synthetic, but the body doesn't understand synthetic. The right. body only understands nature. So ultimately these things aren't working. And right. you can see here, here up on the screen, this is a book from 1871 that I found, which wow. is talking wow. about using turpentine for tapeworms, combining it with castor oil, for gangrene, for meningitis, for throat infections. Honestly, the list of what turpentine was used for was endless. It was the heal or remedy for everything. So that's amazing. Fascinating. Yeah. So, so really, so this book is available and the thought is that I have really enjoyed, I did after you and I met up and um, you actually had an extra bottle of turpentine. So you shared it with me, which was really sweet. And I did a 14 day, I did about, I set out to do 10 days and I did a turpentine cleanse with just a teaspoon of the turpentine, barely a teaspoon in the morning on an empty stomach and then a teaspoon of castor oil after it. And because I worked at the Gerson clinic, we used to chase castor oil with coffee. So I would make a magic coffee that I have recipes on where we add a little baking soda and various things, but it helps flush the castor oil and helps the ducts of the liver um, and gallbladder to cleanse. Um, but after I'd done 10 days, I just really wanted to do more. So I did 14 days and I had just been talking about, I'm really wanting to clean my, out my pineal gland. And so it was perfect timing for that. And I feel like it really elevated my state of mind and heart, my clarity. And um, now my husband wants to do it. I'm sure after listening to you today, he'll be like, where's that turpentine? But, um, and I'm sure, how many times a year would you personally do a turpentine cleanse? Yeah, that's a really good question because it really depends on the person. So right. The ancients traditionally would do it twice a year. And, you know, when we're talking about parasites and candida, which is how I've I've mostly positioned this book to parasites and candida as I see them as the biggest epidemic in the world. Um, right. However, if you're just wanting to deal with, you know, if you're just wanting to open your pineal gland, um, that's something that can be done. You know, you feel the effects instantly. 
However, it generally wears off quite quickly if you've got a toxic gut or parasites. So generally speaking, for most of us, if we've never done a parasite cleanse in our life, I would recommend that we do four days first and we start slowly building up the dose to see how our body handles it because the die off and emotionally and physically can be quite intense. Right. So slowly easing in and then taking it two times per week until the symptoms start to go away. Wow. Now, when I share this, this is kind of speaking to men. For women, it's generally better to ensure that we're doing it in line with our cycle because if we're doing this around our period, our bodies are naturally detoxing at that time. So I recommend not to tamper with that and to allow our bodies to detox at that time naturally. So for women, it's slightly different, which I step out in the book as well, the best timing. But generally until, you know, with the symptoms of brain fog, which is from candida, the bloated belly starts to go down. I mean, I know for me, like I've been working on my digestion for years and it wasn't until the turpentine and these other products that we'll speak about after that my belly really was able to stop being bloated. Right. Um, yeah, I'd like to go on to that next step. Um, and because you do the turpentine cleanse and then the Zen cleanse, which is a product that you also use and recommend, um, is a great way to follow it up, correct? It, so the reason why I feel it's really important to touch on this is because turpentine does also kill some of the good guys. And right. as, as we know, we antibiotics are one of the biggest issues in the world because they kill everything. Now, turpentine doesn't work on that same level. It's not destroying everything. However, we do need to replenish uh, the gut at the same time. And in my years of detoxing, meant trying many different herbs and supplements, the one thing that I wasn't able to really find is an enzyme-based product. So I was eating raw vegan to replenish my enzymes. But when you have digestive issues, eating a lot of raw food is, is really hard. You know, that's why in Ayurvedic medicine, they recommend that you eat cooked food. But when you eat right. cooked food, you're not receiving the enzymes, which actually help the gut microbiome to become stronger and more resilient. So these products, they're fermented for three years. They even played harmonic frequencies to really like raise the vibration of them continuously for wow. those. Products. And they taste good, they feel good, and they're very high vibrational. So for me, combining this with the turpentine is my secret remedy. And I wish I had it five years ago, but I I trust I had to learn to do the horrible Epsom salt flushes with the liver, the olive oil and all of that stuff. Right. To know that, to know that's not because it, it didn't feel natural to me. I was like, really, I'm drinking all this oil and salt. Like, would people it's true. really do that? I've done plenty of those over the years. And the Zen cleanse is just really, really nicely put together. And people can get that also at your website. Um, That's right. We, want, we yeah. want to direct them there because that, of course, helps you um, by sharing this work. Yeah, yeah. So this article talks about what enzymes do in the body for those that don't know. You know, enzymes are what keep us alive. They're our life force. And as yes. we get older, we lose more enzymes. And the enzymes actually work like little Pac-Man. So they go into our gut and they they chomp away at the mucus plaque on the on our colon on the inside and they eat all the nasty stuff, but then they leave behind all this goodness. So they actually balance our gut. And for anyone that's experiencing any gut health issues, like when you do, especially the one cleanse by Zen cleanse, you'll be doing the best poos of your life for weeks. <laughs> it's fascinating. Like it it's I've never done <laughs> poo that good in my life. <laughs> it's so good. So, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one person in the chat is suggesting may also be effective to use it with DMSO topically in micro doses to start would be a bit more gentle and not mess with the gut bacteria. So there's another Great idea. Yeah. perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it would be good on this blog to show the photographs of what comes out. <laughs> yes. Is that down at the bottom here? And anyone close your eyes if you don't want to see some gross stuff or I know we all secretly like to see gross stuff. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So this oh is my this gosh. Isn't, this isn't mine. I st I've taken this from the website. I'm I'm not at a level that I'm brave enough to show my my release yet. <laughs> um, but this it shows many different colors. 
because the way that this works is depend it actually gives us information. So there's a beautiful article um, that's linked to this blog on their website that say if it's pale, if it's black, if it's orange, and it helps us know what's going on in the body. So pretty fascinating. Down the bottom, that's actually some of the liver stones that come out. That right. Come I've seen those before. Liver. And so this is really kind of the lining of the um kind of gunk that's been lining the walls of the colon and the intestines that gets released yeah. during this kind of cleanse, which is fabulous. So that, that, that's a mixture. Some of it's product, but there's definitely, I can tell you, get like this rubber stuff that comes out. Right. Rubber. That's how you know it. So it looks almost like a muscle and that's blocking us from absorbing vitamins and minerals and all the nutrients. So yeah, this is these products are profound. I've never seen anything else like it. Nice. How do you feel after this amazing kind of cleansing? Yeah, I mean, one one of their cleanses is called the Zen Cleanse Rainbow. And this combines the one cleanse and the liver cleanse, plus things that you take over seven days. And basically, it's like, like they call it rainbow for a reason, because it's making you feel like rainbows. When you're taking the enzymes, they make you feel alive. And that combined with the turpentine, is just profound you know the zen cleanse products are just I, I i don't even have words they just make you feel so incredible so incredible well the whole point of of the cleansing we we're really designed to be filled with light all of our cells our minds and our hearts and as we clean out the old gunk it carries away old emotions that don't belong it helps old emotions release, and then we begin living in an uplifted state, and and then everything works better, and we feel clean. We can breathe easier, we can smile easier. Yeah, definitely. And you know, when you're on the detox, like even the Zen cleanse, you know, there's uncomfortable things that do come up. And I always say, the more you can allow yourself to let go, to be present with those things, to make space you know, to take time off, to not work so much during this phase, to maybe have a yeah. technical detox as well, we can really maximize because as I shared at the beginning, letting go on all levels, emotionally, physically, and spiritually to clean ourselves from the inside out is one of the greatest gifts we can give ourselves. So. Absolutely. So Jody, what kind of action would you, first of all, I'd like to say we do have a disclaimer at the beginning and we just like to repeat that we're not here giving medical advice. We're basically sharing our personal experiences and that if you want to go through something like this, you need to do it of your own choice and perhaps speak with a, a health professional. Um, somebody's asking, are you guys making detox retreats? I'd love to jump on a plane and spend some good time with you. That is really a strong possibility, I would say, maybe in the next six months, but we don't have anything. Do we have anything planned right this second, Jody? No, but maybe the, maybe we're being guided by the angels. <laughs> yes, I think we're being guided by the angels. And I think that we could really do this. It would be so much fun. And we know some beautiful places to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Many, many beautiful yes. places. Yes, yes, yes. So um, let's keep that in mind. And how would you like to see people take action? I think um, encouraging people to um, to go to your website through the link that is under our screen here and to grab the turpentine book and have that in their repertoire to read it. I mean, it's really beautifully put together. I I read it in one night, 60 pages of, but it's pictures and it's instructions and it's informative and it helps us understand a lot of things about how this kind of anti-parasite, anti-candida cleansing can work. And mm -hmm. um, thank you, Plants by Fred, for posting that link in the chat. That's great. So it's easier for people to get. And then picking, also picking up the Zen cleanse from your website and mm -hmm. What would you suggest? How would you like to see people move forward? What's your um, parting thoughts? Yeah, well, I think a really good starting point is to enter your link, enter your email into the link, and then you'll receive an email which actually has the Zen Cleanse protocols that I've written myself because I found on their website there wasn't enough information for me personally. So what I would look at is I'd go in there 
and read those protocols first, they're free, and you can get a feeling for which of them might feel best for you. And, and then from there, you can decide what product might be best to work with your body and your current symptoms. And definitely looking at the Turpentine book, reading it through. And then I'm always available on Instagram or email if you have any questions. Perfect. I think it's always good to ask questions before jumping into anything. And if anyone does want to work one-on-one -on -one with me as well to be guided through the process, if you, you know, it's, it's normal your first type of cleanse to feel a little bit nervous, we can have a session together as well to talk about the details and, and go from there. Perfect. That is so great. You're such a radiant example, Jody. You're just really, really gorgeous. I mean, I am grateful to know you as a friend, as a sister, as a fellow holder of the light on the path. And um, thank you for your presence in the world. Thank you. It's so beautiful that we're sharing this. And just one last thing before we wrap up. I feel like we might be wrapping up. Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> I'd just love to share that in this present moment with everything that's happening in the world, with all the things that they're making us take and put in our bodies, that I really believe that turpentine is one of the best things that we can be using to keep us out of that, to keep us pure. And that's why I'm calling it a truth serum because it, you know, many of us are getting caught up in that. So yeah, I wanted to leave with that note because I feel that's what we need to share right now. I agree and we need to be living in a way that we're protecting ourselves, our health, our well-being, because there is a lot being dumped out into the system that we don't want to um, have to live with the results of. And I don't think anybody's immune. I think we can, no matter how healthy we live on the path, we've still got things entering our bodies through contact with other people, through whatever. Yeah. Um, before we say goodbye, I just want to say tomorrow, Friday, we're going to have plasma day and um, it'll be really awesome and fun. So I want to invite people to join us then. Fridays are our future tech day. And Jody. Let's have you back and we can do a women's health show. Um, I know you have a lot to share on that level and even various other things on cleansing. Um, I think if we do several of these, it'll be really fun. I would love that. That would be great. Great. And anybody who's out in our listening audience, we could use a few more moderators here on Twitch. We are rebuilding this Twitch channel. So we're having to build in new ways. I feel like this is a really nice, clean platform. It's a okay, let's go to a different place than we're used to going. But once you're here, it's um, really a great platform to be broadcasting on. It's actually owned by Amazon. It's got a really nice um, ability um, to flow. I'm going to be doing things in the kitchen and have all different guests on. And so we want you to, if you sign up in Twitch with your email and a password, kind of just like you do anywhere and you can follow our channel, which really helps elevate us in the Twitch system. And thank you so much, Carla, for your comment. Um, she's saying thank you so much for sharing this amazing information. I definitely want to try both of the detoxes. Yay. Um, <laughs> yay. And so we know we're having an effect and we're going to keep having an effect. And yes, thank you. Spectral Sun is thanking us. Um, these um, shows only stay up so long on Twitch. Eventually, this material will be either in the member content area at our 21stCenturySuperhuman.com website or on my YouTube channel. Both are um, places where things will show up. It's always 21st Century Superhuman. You can find us on Instagram, YouTube, and here on Twitch. Broadcasting up to four days a week. Okay, Jody, my sister, many blessings to you. And I look forward to seeing you again. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. And thank you for sharing your wisdom and your light is so beautiful. Thank Adios. You. Ciao, Bye -bye. ciao. Bye. And if you're feeling kind of down and you need some inspiration to remember who you are. Whoa, now, child. vibration and these words can take you far i am a 21st century superhuman and i know that the answers are inside i am 
21st century superhuman now, now, now is the time. Thank <laughs> you.